you know, when you haven't seen people for a long time, what do you say? How have you been? What have you been working on? What happened since last we met? And there's a lot of common experience in the room, clearly. Um, but I wanted to, to also use this opportunity because uh, I, I, we're only going to be gathering for the first time, <laughs> or regathering for the first time once. And uh, there are a couple of things that are important, I think, important to me to say, which uh, I, I want to convey to you. Oh, um, sorry. I, oh, I stole the clicker. Yeah, what you do with the clicker? <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. There we go. So one of my goals for this session is to offer personal thanks to you and your organizations, um, a brief acknowledgement of this common experience that I mentioned. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a few things that are different about the conference, things that have uh, changed that, uh, and, and also some things that you need to know uh, for the next couple of days and then I'm going to talk a little bit about how things have changed for you and I have I have uh, seeded this part of the conversation by asking um, some of my colleagues to, to speak up but uh, it's an opportunity for everybody to participate as I mentioned at the beginning I want to I guess reestablish some new context let us all just think about what the new context is because um, I, th I think the notion of a return to normal is is a little bit of a naive fantasy uh, that we're going to return to some things that are the same as before and a lot of things that are not. And so we need to take account of, of much of that. All right. My, my thank you, first of all, if you go back to March of 2020, we had a big conference, the biggest conference of the year, coming up in late March. And around about the 13th or so was when, uh, at least in the state of California, and I'm, I'm blanking now on whether, uh, you know, at what point federal restrictions and things came in, but the state of California said, okay, there are no, not going to be any meetings taking place indoors. Now, <clears throat> actually backing up a little bit before that, we had seen the growth of COVID creating anxiety amongst our audience. We, we came out with policies to uh, try to provide some reassurance about what we were doing. Uh, we, we clearly underestimated at the time what the overall impact was, but, but there was uh, fear amongst everybody in the world at that point and we were getting a lot of folks cancelling for the conference and we were just sort of looking at this closing window thinking I you know we hope things don't get so bad that we have to cancel but um, it did get to that point in fact it got to that point around about March the 10th which is a few days before the government uh, before the government uh, regulatory restrictions and uh, as soon as we notified the hotel that this was going to happen, uh, we got an invoice literally within 30 minutes for almost a million dollars for the cancellation obligations that we had. And we said, look, if this is force majeure, this is an act of God, this is beyond our control, you know, this, this surely must trigger the, the clause in our contract. They said, nope. Thankfully, the governor's ruling a couple of days later alleviated that <laughs> obligation. <laughs> but as you might imagine, so, I mean, we're not that big of an, org of an organization. We certainly couldn't afford to, to pay a million dollars just in cancellations because on top of that, everybody had given us their money, our sponsors, the attendees, etc., had given us their money. And our business model takes that money in, it pays it out in salaries, pays it out in deposits. We had, we had a large amount of money that we had deposited uh, for, for catering, for audiovisual, for everything. Um, I, I've got, my garage has like 10 boxes of t-shirts that we had all got ordered. Um, so 
thankfully, we, we didn't have to pay the cancellation fees because of the government governor's things, but then we had a lot of customers who were kind of like, okay, I've paid money to attend a conference, I can't attend, uh, what are you gonna do? And we, we had to appeal to some extent to the goodwill of our customers and say, look, um, could we handle it this way? Could we give you a credit for some of our digital training? Uh, you will keep the credit that you've already paid to the, the next opportunity to get together. We uh, said we, you could apply that any time uh, until 2023. We came up with some other creative solutions that provided people with value in order to avoid a run on the bank, if you like. Because if we'd had everybody asking us for refunds right at that moment, um, we, we would have been out of business within a few weeks. Uh, same with our sponsors. We were able, thankfully, to convert them into some digital sponsorships and most chose to leave their money with us. Um, the difference that made, frankly, in the willingness of folks like yourselves to say, okay, we trust you, we'll leave our money with you. That enabled us to stay in business. That enabled us to keep our staff going. PPP kicked in a little bit after that, and that helped also to keep some staff, to keep our staff. But without that goodwill from you folks, uh, we'd have been long gone by now. And so I really want to thank you. I know not all of you obviously were directly involved in that particular situation, but three months later, this event was due to take place here. And if you recall back in March of 2020, it was like, okay, everybody's going to lock down and then we'll get back to business, you know, in, in April, May. <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> then it was like, okay, well, the summertime is going to clear things up and then things will be good. Uh, by the fall, we thought we'd be able to get going again. We had another event scheduled for October. That one eventually got <laughs> removed from the schedule. We had another event in December, same thing again. Then in March the following year, and each, you know, we kept looking forward three to six months, hoping that things would, would fix themselves. And then here we are, there's another strain a couple of weeks ago that's, that's kind of rocking the boat. Um, I'm grateful that we were able to run this particular event, but there's been two years of fits and starts for us that I'm sure has been very frustrating for many of you. Thank you for keeping the faith with us. For those of you who've had uh, money sitting with us for a while, we've had time to rebuild during that process. Uh, our, our digital business, thankfully, has, has, has not filled the gap that was left by all of those in-person events, but um, it's been very gratifying to me and my staff uh, to have the trust that you've, you've given us um, and that has enabled us to stay in business, keep people employed, and eventually return to work this week. So thank you for that, really. So as I say, how do we I mean, I've, I've offered you a little bit of my, my gratitude for that, but uh, I mean this in the larger sense. Um, and I think, you know, one of the things that everybody seems to have taken the opportunity, if that's the right word, uh, that take this disruption to our normal lives to, to rethink in some sense how they view their own lives. and. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of people who are, are resigning, have resigned from jobs that they didn't particularly like, thankfully. I, I'm very happy for those folks. I mean, if, if you've taken this time to change the direction of your life in a positive way, I think that's fantastic. Um, for me, my, my personal situation was that um, uh, my wife, prior to, uh, to COVID, um, I had a, a group of caregivers who look after her. She's confined to bed and, and uh, so needs some support during the day so that she can, um, just to look after her while I'm at, I'm at work. Um, and I, I work from home. So with COVID, 
uh, all those folks had to stay home, couldn't do that. Um, and I became her primary caregiver 24 hours a day. Um, that was a period of a few weeks of profound reflection for me on my life and what was important to me. And I hope at this point, thankfully, you know, I was able to bring back uh, at least half of those folks to assist with Linda's care. But if, uh, my, my home life has, has changed, my personal life has changed. It's also brought about changes to my professional life, which uh, I think are mostly positive. Um, and I'm sure all of you have had, to some extent, similar experiences for yourselves. Um, and I, I guess I just wanted that moment of reflection on where we've been before we try to just ramp things up again as normal. Um, I don't have any particular, you know, I'm not a mindfulness coach or anything like that, although I did invite two mindfulness talks to the conference, and partly for that reason, is I think that this notion of, of living more in the moment, um, embracing the present, um, I, I think that's a value that's going to stick with me for forever at this point. Um, and however you have chosen to acknowledge this period and, and uh, help yourself grow, I'm, I'm going to wish you the best on that journey because I think it's, it's really significant. Oh, I think I meant to show this uh, image during that little bit of sentimentality. Because um, <laughs> being, uh, being back here, I'm, I mean, this is a, a, a fabulous image of where we are, you know, you are, where's, where's my pointer? Okay, is that it? Yeah. You are here. There's the, there's the peak. Um, so, uh, a few things that have changed for us this week, uh, and I'm just going to need to put, oh no, I can still read it. Obviously, uh, all our vaccination, uh, pre-clearance, MRs, et cetera, uh, that was a decision that we tossed and turned about for a long time until it became clear that yes, this is, this is part of the new normal. Um, I, I hope that we can you know, gradually drop some of the, the restrictions, but we're going to take a safety first approach beyond this event to our, our March event. Our March event, we've, we've said, okay, things aren't going to change. That, that's our enterprise data world. Things aren't going to change in time for any change in protocols. Uh, so March will be the same. Uh, then we're back here in June. This, this date here in December, for those of you who've been here before, you'll know, well, San Diego is in June, and then in December we're, in, we're on the East Coast. But uh, this contract that governed this particular venue got bumped from June of 2020 to December of 2021. Of course, we thought by then everything would be cleared up and we'd be back to full capacity. We actually, so we have uh, a bit over 300 people registered for this event. Normally we have about 600. Um, I think under the circumstances, it's probably better that we have a little elbow room, that we're not sitting entirely on top of each other. Uh, but it's going to take us a while to get back to that, that original number. Um, that's okay. But a few things. Um, we're going to have some virtual sessions. Now, after we announced the agenda, there were some speakers who said, you know, uh, conditions have changed. That was around when Delta started to emerge. Conditions have changed. My, my company won't let me travel anymore. Or, you know, the vulnerabilities of, of uh, people at home. I can't risk that travel. So we mostly told those folks, sorry, if you can't be here in person, you know, that's not the meet. We're not running. We're not bringing people to San Diego to see a bunch of virtual talks. However, there were a handful where the subject matter we felt was sufficiently unique and important and valuable. So we did enable some of those talks to take place virtually. Most of them are tomorrow. Um, we tried to restrict that to one in every time slot. Um, but 80% of the talks that were previously scheduled are going to take place in person. Um, there are a handful also of folks who just in the last week, for similar reasons related to Omicron, decided I can't take the risk, 
So we've managed to accommodate all of those with one exception, which is um, April Reeves session tomorrow morning. Um, so that one has been canceled. All the others will take place, just some will be virtual. Most of the virtual sessions will be downstairs. In tomorrow's keynote, we're actually gonna have a couple of virtual panelists here. But um, the technology that we used for that is a, a thing called an OWL, which is like a little, looks, looks like an Alexa device that has uh, cameras and the speakers can see the room and uh, it, it's a wonderful thing. Um, we had two tutorials yesterday using this and it was almost like the speaker was in the room. The level of interaction was great. So hopefully very little will be lost in that transition. Um, wonderful new technology too. We have these new projectors that can sit literally three feet from the screen and give you a, a, a fully squared uh, image. That's just amazing. Um, totally unrelated to COVID obviously, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, we've, uh, th but there are other things that happened, you know, since, since we met last. Um, there were societal changes. Um, uh, so now we're offering um, buttons for those who wish to indicate their pronouns, for example. Um, uh, we chose not, we debated whether we should collect that information in the process of registration. Um, Actually, legal advice suggested that we do not do that for the time being, um, but for anybody who'd like to, to um, grab a button, uh, there's a few options there. The one that I'm wearing um, is actually a, a social distancing indicator. So uh, red would mean let's keep our, our distance. Yellow means fist bumps, fine, um, elbows, uh, and if you choose not to wear anything that's, uh, I mean, obviously that's, you know, a null answer doesn't really give you any information, but at least for those who would like to take the time to, uh, or who would like to indicate what their preferences, distance and preferences are, then we have that option here. Uh, I mentioned we added a couple of sessions on mindfulness. So Matthias uh, yesterday uh, was uh, kind of a very, kind of an enterprise level if you want to be a, a mindful manager um, and she's going to be around uh, today if you'd like to chat to her tomorrow morning session with Len Silverston uh, Zen with Len very popular session uh, plan is to have it on the beach whether cooperating uh, otherwise we'll we'll move it indoors but very popular session with Len that we've been running uh, for some time now uh, I mentioned earlier the speaker COVID protocols. Um, so for those speakers, you can demask, but stay up front, please. Uh, we were asked yesterday if we we're distributing an attendee list, and the answer is is no, we're not. Um, if you want to connect to other attendees, please join the app. Basically, this is a, um, a data privacy issue. So if we need to request for people to opt in to an attendee list, then the attendee list is essentially going to be incomplete and of less value. Um, we've made the decision not to have the attendee list at all. If you join the app, you'll be able to connect with other attendees or post something on a message board, let uh, everybody know that you'd like to meet folks who have, have a particular interest. Um, you'll see on the food service, uh, items that are wrapped. Uh, I, I hope it's pretty obvious why we've done that to enhance the uh, both the, the reality and the perception that you know it's it's safe to grab a muffin and um, we've tried to put things in place. Uh, one of the great things about this venue, you know, I, th I think at this point, if you're data driven, you realize that most of the the um, conveyance of, of virus is um, respiratory, respiratory. And so ventilation is, is probably the more significant uh, factor in that. And given where we are, uh, there's a lot of opportunities to, to get some fresh air through. But um, we still have lots of things that you can use to protect services, uh, surfaces 
Uh, also, um, I have a, there's, there's a couple of things um, if you want a, a lanyard for your your face coverings. There's also little mask extenders and stuff. We got we got all that stuff um, at the registration desk. All right. So I'd like to. Oops. Okay. I'm a, I'm a slide behind <laughs> on all my all my things here. Uh, oh, one thing to mention is that uh, we, um, one of the adjustments being in December, the weather is not as reliable. So um, the reason this room is set in rounds and the Russo room downstairs is so we can do a quick change if uh, rain is predicted. It is predicted at 85% probability today, so we're going to be running lunch in this room and also the Russo downstairs. Um, that's going to be a little bit inconvenient uh, for Russo folks because there's a session immediately beforehand and there's also sessions immediately after in both rooms. So um, I just ask for you to, your understanding on that and, and uh, we'll do the best we can. All right. How has data practice changed? And th this really is, is probably the most important part of this, but have I really talked that long? My goodness, okay. Um, all right, well, the one instruction I give to speakers is, I don't care what time you start, just finish on time. <laughs> and I've left myself with 54 seconds to get through about half my, my presentation. <laughs> so, to all those folks I, I asked to contribute this morning, My bad. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, look, uh, I know I got I got a little uh, emotional about some parts of, of what I've been saying here, um, but um, I. I Honestly, thank you from the bottom of, bottom of my heart and, and my colleagues. Uh, like I say, we wouldn't be here without you. And I hope that whatever journey each of you is on individually, um, however that has been diverted, uh, improved, uh, whatever, over the last year and a half, um, I hope that it continues successfully for you all. Um, let's try to get back to some normalcy now. Uh, we're going to take a break and get back to our track sessions. Uh, please, if you would give yourselves uh, a round of, of applause and thanks. Um, it's been a pleasure.